been 18 months since I first sat down with Kate Everett. I thought it timely to chat with Kate again now, following the second Do It For Dolly Day, and to find out what Dolly's dream has been up to and the impact they're making in the community. I hope that you enjoy my interview with Kate. Hi, Kate. Good to see you. I haven't seen you for ages. <laughs> Thank you. Same to you. It's so exciting. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't think I've seen you since Tamworth when we sat down that last time, which was over 12 months ago. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it's been a long time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And you were just back from Canberra after winning the Local Hero Award. So, Kate, I wanted to know how good that has been for Dolly Stream in the past 12 months. Was it a big help? It was. I mean, um, it's it's been a whirlwind 12 months. It's probably been harder now when you look back on the last 12 months, but when you're in the middle of it, you just take it every day as it comes. But, yes, look, I definitely think that award helped the momentum and build traction for Dolly's Dream. It also... Um, it kind of put us in a bit of a spin as far as we were still learning what we wanted to do and what we wanted to achieve. So, um, you know, it, it probably really pressed us to work a lot harder. But in saying that, two years down the track, we have, um, I, I think we're starting to get somewhere. Yeah, oh, that that's really good. So where are you at with Dolly's Dream, Kate? Um, you know, what what have you achieved in the past even just the past 12 months? So since I spoke to you, we've had um, an agreement with the Queensland Government um, to roll out eSmart and Connect workshops and digital licences throughout schools. Um, I think the number was about 500 schools. Um, That's just been a monumental task and obviously nothing works fast in government. So, um, but in saying that, I think we're finally getting somewhere. Um, and we did two pilot programs in the Northern Territory as well, hoping to build on that. Um, we've also um, refined the Connect workshops a little bit, which was, um, you know, we've listened to parents, we've listened to what, what they want to know um, and, and refined how we deliver them. And obviously with 2020 and COVID-19, um, our team has worked so beautifully and obviously we've redirected our energy and um, we've actually gone online and we're, be, we're able to deliver those online as well. Um, oh, and, and then probably the biggest achievement, the one that stands out, I guess, for Tick and I is the Digi Pledge. Now, the Digi Pledge is like a digital licence and it basically walks parents and children through online scenarios. So whether it's, you know, bullying or whether it's online safety or whether it's how to, um, you know, look at an app, a new app and go, oh, is this something that I need? Where does my information go? Or, you know, I've, I've been looking at this, this and this online and now I'm getting a, a lot of ads for certain things. How do I deal with that? Or... You know, I made a post and and somebody seems to be trolling me. What do I do? So it deals with all these scenarios and um, I just just think it's amazing. I love it. Yeah. Oh, I'll have to go and have a look. And, Kate, like at a grassroots level, do you think you have made a difference um, with, with bullying? I think so. I think if we haven't, I think the awareness alone that we've brought forward to most households in Australia, I think it's got to change somewhere. I think, you know, at a workplace level, how children deal with it, how children now associate butterflies and blue with being kind and, and, you know, looking out for other, other children at at a e-kindy and, and you know, a prep age. I, Mm. I think at a grassroots level, yes, that, Mm. that we have. Yeah. Mm. From my, like an outsider's point of view, looking in, um, to me, I think the biggest thing you've done is create awareness around stopping the bullying. But if you are the one being bullied, I think you've you've made um, an environment where it's less isolating because I think kids realise that they're not the only ones 
if someone's bullying them, it doesn't necessarily mean that there is anything wrong with them. You know, if you're getting bullied, you must feel that there is something wrong with you, otherwise the kids wouldn't bully you. So I think you've um, closed the gap there and created a lot more awareness around around that. So that must make kids particularly feel a lot better, I think, and maybe deal with it in a, in a, in a better way. Do you think that? Absolutely. And if, if all we've done is start a conversation in one household, that is, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm struggling, I'm having a hard time, I feel like I don't fit in and it's raised a conversation and parents then can then, you know, sit down or, or you know, teachers or any other adult and can sit down and, and walk them through and go, you know, there is, there is nothing wrong with you and it may be re- a reflection on what that other person's going through and, you know, after talking about situations, quite often they're not as bad as they initially seem. But, um, you know, that's, that's what we set out to do, was start, start a conversation and raise awareness. And if nothing else, all programs aside, I think, I think we've achieved that. Yeah. And, and, Kate, like you're trying to work with um, the kids, parents, schools, government and the, ho- and the community as a whole, aren't you? Yeah. You know, this is, this is not just fixed in schools and it's not just fixed in homes. It's, it's sporting arenas. It's workplaces it's community events it's the way you conduct yourself um everywhere not you know on online at work at school in the in the school drop-off or there's there's so many aspects to it so we never set out to go if we do this in schools this is the only way we'll fix this problem it was just um you know it's it's an overall approach yeah, a much wider problem too. Um, mm. Kate, you just had Do It For Dolly Day for the second time. So how did that go this year? I think it was fantastic. Um, obviously, the fundraising wasn't as huge as it was last year, given the restraints of COVID-19 restrictions. But in saying that, I think we've raised over $20,000, which is phenomenal, really. Um, and given yeah. and given that you know the economy is doing it pretty tough as well, so that's just amazing. But look, honestly, um, the web traffic and people looking at the digital license and, and going through the parent hub and, and the resources that we've been working on for two years was incredible. And just to see um, social media feeds filled with blue for days and days was just beautiful absolutely beautiful so hopefully hopefully we can keep building on it and um you know i think i think we'll ever a sea of blue um you know we we honor not only dolly's memory but hopefully um it, it strives to take a stand against bullying yeah kate i couldn't help but notice the support that you um had through the catherine community so tell me about how wonderful your little community up there has been we are so lucky. I was only talking um, to someone about this yesterday afternoon as I drove home from work. And um, so Nutrien and Catherine got, got the, Nutrien globally got behind us, which was, which was really amazing. And so all, you know, if we could see that right across Australia. But our little, our little um, shop in town, you know, people come through all day making donations. We, we had a sausage sizzle lunch and it was really sweet. But, um, look, there were so many amazing things. Um, businesses short notice got behind and did some shirts for us. We had one business supply us with the shirts and other business printed them. Um, we had our local fishing shop who is an incredible, incredible family and they get behind everything. And he's like, you know what, let's do Yeti cups. This is amazing. And um, so on a spur of the moment, Thursday afternoon, into the engraver shopping wheels, a few hundred Yeti cups and, um, you know, in Dolly Blue, of course. So it's just incredible. And then we had little cafes getting, you know, pay it forward cards and we had banks ringing going, you know what, um, we've, we've, you know, donated three, three meals worth of cards out this week. And that's, that's incredible support in a little town. It's it's beautiful. 
Yeah, I, I actually saw a post on Facebook from the man that owns the Catherine Tackle World and I thought, oh, I'm going to have to get some of those Yeti cups because they're really beautiful. But also the um, the fish, the things that you, I don't even know what they're called, very obviously so ashamed for me, but, you know, that, um, the, that you put on. The lure, the, lure. the dolly lure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what I was. But, um, yeah, so I'm going to get some of those for the boys. I, I, I'll ring up on Monday and organise Oh, lovely. Oh, yeah, that's so amazing. That's... They do such a good job. That not only do they support us, they support every little sporting group they can and, you know, they're just just an incredible family and I think, um, I think anyone that belongs to a small community will understand that feeling and especially when, you, you know, you're doing it tough and, and you need support and, um, yeah, we've, we've been really blessed with, um, you know, getting to call Catherine our home. Yeah, oh, that's so good, Kate. You're very lucky, to, really, to live where you live. Um, I just I wanted to ask too, because I know you must have still have some really bad, you know, sad days and not, you know, not great days. So when when you are feeling when you're having a particularly bad day, what sort of things do you do? How do you climb out of that hole that that you know you you probably you would find yourself in? Oh, that is such a such a tough question. Um, I guess as we've gone over the last two years, it, it honestly changes. Um, given the award and the amount of travelling that we did in that first 12 months, um, co- coping was, was difficult. Um, the bonus was we did a lot of that together, but it meant you were always on high alert. And so when you crashed, you had to crash really quickly, really quietly, and then come out fighting. And I guess, um, I guess we kind of went through where we lent on each other a lot. And, um, and then the last six to eight months um, with my job and with Tick's job and working apart, honestly, um, I think we've had to learn to cope on our own which is something new for us, not only um, we're used to working and living in each other's back pockets. So that, that's been another journey in itself. Um, so what do, what do we do? Um, I have a counsellor. I have a fabulous counsellor. Um, I, I did see a couple of counsellors early in the piece and they didn't gel. It didn't, it didn't feel anything. I didn't, it didn't mean anything. I've found a counsellor who I absolutely love. Um, I might see her every week for three or four weeks. I might not see her for two months. Um, She's incredible. Love her. Can't recommend that enough. And um, I think it takes the load off off your friendship circle as well. You know, you're you're not always jumping on them. In saying that, I have a really, really good support group with my friends. An incredible support group. Um, Not only, not only, here around me but um you know like girls I catch up with on messenger or phone once a week and and you know that's been really important to me but I think as as we move on right now I'm through I'm right in I'm right back into my fitness um I you know with all the travel and and all the dinners and, you know, meet and greet and socialising. And I think it was very easy to go, oh, a glass of wine and I'll be fine. Right now I'm heavily focused on my health um, and my down, down time um, is, is gardening at the minute, which is crazy. Everyone's like, what about your horses? And I'm like, to me, my downtime is, is gardening and running right now. So I mean, it, it changes as it goes on. Horses has always kind of been associated with work. So I've, um, <laughs> as much as I love, as much as I love them, I think I've slowed down into, um, you know, I just need to do something very gentle, <laughs> good for the soul, yeah. even. Yeah, I yeah. understand that completely. Yeah. Um, I actually we were watching a movie last night, and I was thinking of you um, because they in it, this little boy said. Um, uh, you you don't die by falling in the river. You only die when you stay submerged. And I I just pictured you and tick how you 
you did, you got up out of that river and just hit the ground running and got yourselves busy and and you made what happened mean something, not just to the three of you, but more important, most importantly to Dolly. So, um, you know, I, I always think of you in great awe, all of you, and um, you know, how, how well you you have done in these past two years and i just want to also ask about your health and fitness because i know you i saw you put a post up and i let you in on a secret i um you you put the post up about jules galloway and how wonderful she was so of course i rang jules so now i'm um talking to jules by zoom and she is wonderful but um you know and and it's partly too finding i guess that person that you do click with like you have with your psychologist yeah. your counselor and um and i have no doubt that you've clicked with jules too because i certainly did but ha what sort of an impact has has looking after your health and fitness had on your overall well-being kate honestly um october last year i came home and i was just tired i was just it, i was i felt like i was just going through day-to-day -day ticking boxes, get up, do the animals, you know, turn sprinklers on, go to work, please people, come home, make mandatory phone calls, do a bit on the charity. So I, I felt like I was ticking boxes and there was this massive fog. And I sat on the couch one night and um, I was, the television was on and I, I was reading a book, but there was, there was a show on and it, was something about, you know, in 12 months I will be. And I, I thought, oh, my God, in 12 months, do you know what I don't want to be? I don't want to be sitting here in this brain fog. I don't want to be heavier than I've ever been before. Um, I, there's so much I don't want to be. And at the time, my family were all following every fitness guru or health guru and and. I asked them, I said, has anybody called any of these people or do you just follow their, their blogs or their videos or whatever they're putting out? Nobody had. And for whatever reason, the information that they'd shared about Jules just kind of clicked. And I made a phone call and I made a promise to myself that I, since I was paying her and taking up her valuable time, I may as well do what she tells me because clearly what I was doing by myself wasn't working. Um, mm -hmm. and, and I did. And honestly, within six to eight weeks, I started to feel so much better, um, as in the fog lifted a little. And, mm -hmm. you know, this, this is probably a combination of counselling and getting back on the fitness wagon and what I was, the work I was doing with Jules as well but everything started to come together and I just could not believe it. So then after a couple of months, I thought, you know what, let's set another goal. Let's start training for a marathon as well. So I called another <laughs> friend that I'd met on a speaking tour and I said, virtually, could you train me to do a marathon in six to eight months? And she goes, I can do that in three months. Let's do this. So oh, up until a month ago, when I actually pulled some muscles really badly, um, I was training for a marathon. <laughs> so in oh. six months, I've gone from being very overweight, um, feeling like I'm hungover all the time, which is apparently a gluten intolerance. Who would have thought that? Um, <laughs> but um, but I've, lost, I've lost 20 kilos. Yeah, no, it wasn't the wine at all. It probably was, actually. <laughs> So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm an almost non-drinker with a uh, gluten, gluten and dairy-free and training for a marathon in, in eight months or whatever we're up to. So um, it's, it's honestly been the most fabulous thing I've done for a long time. And, you know, I think, I think um, the results speak for themselves. I feel amazing. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's so good to hear, Kate. Well, I will have to catch up after that marathon, but whatever you do, don't don't tear any more muscles or pull any more muscles. I, I won't, I won't. I've got, I've got a physio on board on my, on my, on my health team now, so um, um, <laughs> yes. 
<laughs> well, Kate, it's been so lovely to catch up with you. And I know I've interrupted your beautiful gardening day today and there's nothing no, like gardening you. for the soul. But, yeah, thank you so much. I always love talking to you. Thank you so much. It looks... <laughs> it's your you house, not... Goodbye. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Thanks, Kate. Thank you. Thanks so much for watching our video. I hope you enjoyed it. And please try to remember to just click on the subscribe button so we can keep you updated with everything that's happening. Thank you.